thing. Okay, so welcome to, again, the UNCG Libraries Research and Application Webinar on ICPSR Student Data Sandbox by Joe Klein, our GIS and Data Visualization Librarian. Thanks, Joe. Thank you, Sam. Um, yes, I have to say that really slowly too. So I might slip up and call it like IPSR a couple of times because that's how Adobe will automatically read that if you use a screen reader. Um, so yeah, so I'm Joe Klein. I use they, them pronouns. I'm the GIS and data viz librarian at Jackson Library, working out of my home office. Um, and I'm going to be showing you the ICPSR Student Data Sandbox, um, which is an open repository for data used in or generated by student research in the social, behavioral, and health sciences. So a quick note from ICPSR, which I guess I should have done before we started recording, um, about their Love Data Week 2021. So they do this recurring annual program um, called Love Data Week or on Valentine's Day. So it's kind of cute. Um, they've got a couple of webinars on using ICPSR and other data sources, including a webinar on data in arts and culture disciplines on Wednesday. So that's that digital methods for dance history, which I think is pretty cool. Um, and then they also have an adopt a data set program which is where you adopt an ICPSR data set to explore through analysis, visualization, and other data activities. So if you want to get practice with cleaning data or doing any of the kind of data analysis activities that you might have to do for your research, I recommend checking that out. Um, it's also a good way to just explore what data they have available because there is a ton in there. Um, so that's the topic of uh, Thursday's webinar. Wait, ICPSR has that? Um, because I do say that a lot as well. So these are ICPSR's webinars, and you can learn more about these at um, this URL, which I will drop in the chat, and I should have sent these to Sam is what I should have done. Um, so that is that URL for the Love Data Week, or you can find them on Twitter at hashtag lovedata21. So by the end of this webinar today, I hope you'll have a better idea of what the sandbox is and how you can use it both as a source of student data. So for students that are looking for data to use in their projects, which was created by other students, um, and as a tool for practicing data management and sharing in the classroom. So if you've got projects where students are using data, creating that data, um, doing anything with it, essentially, you could use this tool. Um, and again, they do have a focus on the social sciences, behavioral sciences, and health sciences, but it is not limited to just those three fields. Um, it's for just about any student data because other repositories where you could upload or share data typically don't accept student um, submissions. So this one is unique in that it is solely for student submissions. So it's for use in learning and education primarily. Um, that being said, there is some uh, research, student research grade data in here as well. So it's a tool for students to um, participate in the uh, research process and the scholarly process. So the Student Data Sandbox, again, is a repository for student data on the open ICPSR site at www.openicpsr slash openicpsr. So it's a little bit redundant. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click on this. And you should still be able to see my screen. Is that right, Sam? Yes. Okay, cool. Thank you. Sorry, I have the videos off. Um, alrighty, so how you get to the uh, student data sandbox is a little bit hidden. So they don't have any links on the main ICPSR website, which you can get to through the library. So you go to this open ICPSR site, and in the upper right, click on repositories. And you'll notice I'm looking this way, my monitor is facing the other direction as my webcam. So um, once you're on this repositories page, you'll see all of the different open um, repositories that ICPSR has, which means anybody can view or use data in these repositories. Um, some of them will allow just about anybody to submit data to them. Um, the student data sandbox, for example, limits it to um, students from a institutional or a member institution. So UNC Greensboro is a member institution, so our students will have the ability to upload data to this. Um, other institutions and other students at non-member institutions can still view this data too though um, with a free account. So you do have to make a free account with ICPSR to be able to use this data or upload data. 
So a little bit about it. Um, and I'm just gonna pull this information from their description. Um, so the student data sandbox was created um, because students generate and analyze a lot of data, um, especially now as we are doing more quantitative analysis in lab classes, for example, um, or you know, looking at census data and demographic data, or just you know, getting those digital literacy skills up so that they know what data is and how to work with it. Um, so they're doing this data generation and anal analysis uh, as part of class projects, honors theses, research papers. Um, maybe they are doing a personal pet project or they have a digital project in one of their classes. So the sandbox was created primarily for students and classes. So as a instructor, you could set up a project for students in your class or for different groups to submit their data um, or students can do it on their own individually. Um, and again, it's for uh, students who are at member institutions. So it's for students to self-publish data that they generate or use. So if they're using a subset of data from another open ICPSR data set, for example, if they're using a subset of like census data, any other existing data that's out there, as long as it's a subset um, and there are a couple of other things that students can work through to figure out whether they can share this data or not, um, they can put it here <laughs> along with the other data that they generated to use in their research. Um, so it's a good way to kind of collect or centralize that data. So anybody else who wants to look at their research to um, review it. So if you've got a student who's working on a project and you want to review this data, you can um, view it right in the open um, student data sandbox site. So let me see real quick. Okay, so the main, I guess, goals or reasons why this is a pretty cool tool. Um, it is primarily to have students learn about data management with the goal of sharing. So not just data management for the sake of learning necessarily, but they will also be able to share their data in a way that gives them um, not necessarily a scholarly profile, but in a way that they can share it with others. So they can send a DOI or a URL um, for their data set to their professor, to you know, maybe the PI of a lab that they want to work in as an assistant, um, and they can share this data elsewhere, which is pretty cool. Because you can't really do that if you're sharing data on like Box or a Google Drive without making it available or public and losing all of that context and other information and documentation. So that goes into the second uh, kind of goal or, or reason why this is a cool tool is it allows students to be recognized for the work that they've contributed. So if they are doing research as part of their um, honors theses or their just you know graduate um, theses, <laughs> graduate research projects, um, they can be recognized for that work with a data citation because they have that DOI or persistent identifier or URL that they can link to that data. So if they go ahead, if they go publish their work in the future, um, if they present at a conference, they can link to the data that they used for that um, project, which is really cool. Um, and then they can also learn from each other's data. So if students in a class, for example, you've got the 2019 cohort, they collect survey data from the class, they can submit it and do their research and link their research papers to the data in the open, uh, open ICPSR student data sandbox. And then the next year's cohort in 2020, or 2021, 2022, can view that data, download it, use it, and add it to their own data that they collect the next year. So it's a really cool way you can see over time how classes change or how different cohorts of students do research differently. Um, and they can learn from it. So they can learn from each other. Um, they can also see how other students organize their data or manage it or write up documentation. So instead of having to depend on um, professional grade, research grade documentation, which can be very lengthy and confusing for students that are still starting out with data, they can see what other students have done um, in a way that may be a little bit more accessible for them. So the data in the uh, student data sandbox can be collected by the students themselves. Again, and I already mentioned this, it could be subsets of existing data sets. Um, so anything that students use for their own research, um, truly anything, 
which is again helpful because it's centralized in that one area and you don't have to go looking for 12 billion different data sets to recreate the project or to evaluate a student's performance in a research project, for example. Um, so students, oops, prior research, there we go. Okay, um, there are some requirements to submit to open ICPSR and to the student data sandbox, mainly that the student makes a free account and that they include documentation along with their data upload. For um, our students that are uploading data, when they create their account, there is a way, um, there's like a field where they can enter UNC Greensboro and it will link their account to the UNCG Greensboro institution and it will automatically allow them, it'll let the system know that they can upload data as a um, affiliate of that member institution, which is pretty cool too. Um, there's also some behind the scenes where I get a request in my inbox and approve it, um, but for the most part, it's automated as far as the students can tell. Um, and then, okay, and as I mentioned before, students can submit data for their individual independent projects. So for example, McNair scholars um, for their own independent research, if a student is doing an independent study or a practicum um, or any other research that they would like to be able to share, um, or they can do it as part of a class in a more guided environment um, or a workshop. So I might experiment with some workshops at the library with this as well. So as the PI or instructor of a class or the PI of a project, you can set up a project um, how you would like it to be set up. You can add folders um, and do a bunch of other things. And then you can add students to it or the students can create their own project on their own. So it's really versatile in terms of how you set it up. Um, it's really just depends on what you would like to do. Okay. Let me go back really quickly. Okay, lost my presenter notes, which I am sadly still dependent on. Okay, so they have a lot of documentation to help students prepare and submit their data because that is the goal of this is as a learning opportunity to help students um, learn the procedures that they need to go through to prepare their data, submit it, document it, and then finally share it out with the world. So they've got, um, doo -doo -doo, there's my mouse. Uh, they've got the uh, ICPSR Guide to Social Science Data Prep and Archiving linked right on this homepage when you first are on the Student Data Sandbox. So this is a helpful guide. It is focused on social science, um, but there are, tons of overlap between social sciences and data in other fields. And there's tons of resources like this one out there as well, um, if students need that extra help. They've also got a very extensive um, like deposit instructions. So as you'll see here, when you click to start your deposit, they basically go through every single step that a student would have to go to in order to submit their data. So you go to the OpenICPSR website, you sign in, um, they can create an account if they're a new user, and then all of these different steps here. So they prompt them to enter, you know, if they're using a subset of data from another source, they can enter the URL for that in the summary. Um, it goes through the process of how they upload any code books or other documentation that's helpful. Um, and then there are other, uh, you know, terms and conditions that they'll have to accept and then disclosure risks or other prompts of information. So it's pretty detailed about um, the procedure, which is really nice. Um, so when they actually go to deposit data, it'll have them log in. I'm already logged in. So they can start a project title. And then at the very bottom, it says student data sandbox. I'm just gonna show you what this looks like so you can see what the actual form fields look like. All right, so it has created it. So I can continue to my workspace that I have just created called workshop. So this is what it'll look like for the person who's creating this project at first. So students will see this. If you're an instructor starting um, a class project and you want to add students to it. So you can add students, you can share the project with them. You can copy a project for another cohort. You can download everything, so the entire project or just the individual files that you upload. Um, and I don't have a download option because there's nothing in here yet. 
Um, and then you can also add like a PI. So the PI could be the student if they're doing an individual project or their actual PI if it's part of a lab um, or an already established research project. Then there's the instructor and the institution if they're doing a class. Um, it says it's required, um, but students can do independent projects here. So this is where they could put their advisor's name, for example. Um, so it's very uh, flexible. And then you can also link related publications. So that's where you can put, uh, or where the student can put the citation for anything that they publish using this data, which is really neat as well. Um, the question marks, as you'll see, are kind of notes for what information they're looking for, which I find really helpful for students that are new to this data management research data management process. So for example, response rate underneath methodology, this question mark goes through a bunch of examples as well as what response rate means. Some of these are still blank um, or help not currently available because it is a very new tool. So they're still adding some features and things. Um, so that is what it looks like. Do, um, okay. And again, I wanna mention that it's not just limited to social sciences data. Um, so if there's not another repository that accepts student data in your field or in your discipline, so for example, um, geography, if there's not a geography repository out there that accepts student data, they can slap it in here and still have that um, data sharing experience. So you can browse data within here as well. So I'm going to leave my workspace and go back to that open ICPSR site, click on repositories again. You could also just search and it will be an option in the search um, field, but I'm going to go back to the open, uh, I keep trying to say open student data sandbox, but it is the student data sandbox. Um, and you can click on browse student data deposits. So this is where you can browse all of the student data that has been uploaded here. You'll notice there is one file <laughs> that has been uploaded. Again, it's super, super new. Um, I think as of December, January. So not many folks have had classes or student research to add yet. Um, so this is a uh, project that has been added by one of the um, creators of the Student Data Sandbox, one of their team members. So I'm just gonna show you what it looks like when you actually have data in here that you want to use. So if students want to use data in here next year, once there's more, um, you'll click on it. There you have versioning. So if you have multiple versions, for example, if you're an instructor and you wanna set up each year or each cohort as its own version, you could do that. Um, or it could be version one and then semester two maybe cleans the data, does some data analysis and re-uploads it. And that could be version two. Um, so you'll see the code book. So what variables are in these data sets? Um, what specific things were used to generate the data or do specific analysis, especially if they're using or combining with other data sets? Um, they've also got uh, the data downloads and a um, file to help upload it into SPSS. So one of the things I like about ICPSR is they do work primarily with SPSS. So if you're using that in your classes, it is really helpful to already have this example of what an SPSS file looks like within a repository. But you can also upload like CSVs, Excel files, text files, PDFs are in here. Um, and other types of data files as well. So I think you can add R, um, both R, um, I'm gonna call it profile file. So the settings that you can download, um, our history, there we go. So you can download or upload just about anything that you need in order to use this data. It also gives you more information about it. So the scope of the project, which is a really good experience for students to be able to find that or collect and document that about their data sets, um, because that's something you often don't think about doing when you're first collecting data as a student. It's something you realize later when you go to write about it and you're like, oh, where, when did I get this again? Like what dates did I collect this data? So documentation can be very helpful. And this has a nice guide. As you submit your data, it will give you form fields for each of these categories. So it helps guide you through it. Um, and then again, related publications. So students can see what publications have been written using this data set or which have used this data set to get a better idea of how we write about data in research and in scholarly um, publications, which is also very helpful. And because this is an open student based repository, they do have a report a problem button, which is pretty nice. So if there's a problem where a student accidentally uploads copyrighted data and they don't realize it, 
um, or if there's a disclosure or privacy risk, um, you can always report that there is an issue and they will pull it, review it, and re-upload it or ask the student to review it. Um, or the PI who's listed, the class instructor, will be asked to review that data set. Um, and then when you go to download, you click on download, it will give you this terms of use thing, which I also like as a learning experience for students, um, because it kind of has a quick blurb about the importance of citing data. Um, it defines confidentiality at the bottom and research subject, which is uh, pretty standard for a lot of repositories is you wanna make sure you're not uploading data that's you know confidential or which could be a risk for your research subjects if that data were to be shared um, on an open repository like OpenICPSR. So it's helpful for students to be able to see this in the real world application instead of just reading about it in like city training or some other workshop or webinar like this one. So you click agree and it lets you download it. And I won't open that. It's just the three files that are in there. So back to my slides, some other uh, resources that are available um, to help you implement the sandbox in your classes or for students to use it on their own include the teaching and learning page. Um, I'm gonna make sure there's no hands raised in the participants real quick. Looks like we're good. Um, okay, so it includes the teaching and learning page on the ICPSR website. And I can copy, whoops, copy paste this from the thing real quick. Okay, so in the chat, I just pasted this URL for their resources. So this is on ICPSR's main website, not the open ICPSR site. Um, so it says instructors in the like resources for instructors in the tab, but don't let you put that off. Don't let that put you off. Um, I'm in this overview tab underneath teaching and learning. So these resources are specifically created for undergrad faculty and students, but I have found them useful for any um, newcomers to data and research data management and for some faculty as well as like a refresher. Um, so I found these pretty helpful. Um, they've got data-driven learning guides, which include um, standalone exercises that use online data analysis for mostly social science concepts. Um, and they have a ton of topics, uh, 53 to be exact, which is a ton to me, um, on various different um, topics within social science that go through the process of how we use data to research this type of topic, what questions you can ask and how you will use data to answer those questions. Um, so for example, this one will have a sample data set, um, which is within the ICPSR ecosystem. So it's another example of showing students how having that DOI um, or dedicated URL can help them share their data. So that's an example in the other ICPSR data set. So it links to those. Um, and I see a question. So you're able to see the data if people open it to the public. In ICPSR, yes, you can see um, data that is available for the most part. You might not be able to use restricted data sets, but in the student data sandbox, um, all of it is open. As when you publish your project, any data within that project is viewable. So it's not recommended for restricted data. Um, it's mostly for um, student projects using data that can be made open. So if your students are working on, for example, like public health data and there's some sensitive information in there, they wouldn't be able to share that if, within the student data sandbox, at least not yet. Um, so they might be working on more um, guidance for that, but because ICPSR doesn't review um, or vet the data submitted by students at all, like it does for the other repositories, I mean, like it does for the main ICPSR site, um, they can't allow that type of data to be um, in there. And exactly, so you can also get into the problems uh, with IRBs um, that way, or with the IRB, sorry. Um, yes, so if you have a student working on a project that needs like IRB approval for human subjects research, they likely won't be able to share their data here. Um, but you could have them go through an example, uh, go through this process with an example data set just to see what it's like to let them have that experience, even though they can't share their data for their specific um, protected or I guess more sensitive research project. Okay, so those are the data driven learning guides. I'm going to go back to this uh, teaching and learning page again. 
and they've got exercise modules. So these are really helpful um, entire sequenced activities that you could spend an entire class session doing, for example, or an entire workshop. Um, so I really like the Exploring Data Through Research Literature project because it uses another feature of ICPSR that I'll share with you in a second. Um, okay, so this uses the bibliography of data-related literature that ICPSR has as a data set itself. So it's a collection of, of um, publications that cite data from ICPSR. Um, so they use this entire bibliography as a data set. So they have information about it, some learning research methods that you can learn using these exercises. And then, you know, the notion of application in social science research and what that means. Um, and then I always like that they shout out the library and how we can help them find articles. If you scroll all the way back up in this kind of hidden bar though, they've got the exercises. So you click on exercises, it takes you through um, three for this specific example, but others have more or less. Um, just examples of how you can use these in your class to guide students through the research process and through ICPSR's resources. Um, there aren't any specifically for the student data sandbox yet, I don't think. Let me double check. And right now, I think there are only these four. Um, but at some point, they may add one for the student data sandbox because it's a really cool tool and will be helpful to have those exercise modules for that. Okay. They also have um, YouTube videos and PDF guides for students. So I'm gonna go back to that URL, um, but I'm gonna go to this teaching and learning dropdown and click on resources for students. So these are those PDF guides. So how to read a journal article, a guide to interpreting SPSS output if you'll be using SPSS or if a data set that they would like to use in ICPSR has SPSS. Um, files, how to cite data and why it's important, and then also data management pl plans. So this is aimed at students and undergraduate student level um, researchers who just need help with data management plans. And my phone thinks I'm talking to Google. <laughs> I am not. Okay, so I'm going to go back up and then resources for teachers in this teaching and learning tab has lots of videos on teaching or rather they have these two linked, um, but they do have a YouTube channel with tons of resources on you know, research data management, what is data? Um, and they will be adding some student data sandbox ones to this as well soon. Alrighty, and then the third, I guess, or second big ICPSR resource is that bibliography of data related publications that I mentioned. And here is this URL. So this is, um, I guess, 20 years old, is their bibliography of data-related literature. So anything that cites a data set within ICPSR, including open data, uh, the open ICPSR data. Um, so that's openly accessible data that anybody can use um, will be within here. So this is really great for students to see how researchers write about data and how they cite data within their own projects or just how we include data in research um, in actual scholarly publications, which is really cool, I think. They also have things like bibliography users and research, uh, research, researcher resources, um, which is even more information. So there's tons in here. Okay, I wanna make sure I've hit it all and I have. So if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Um, if you would, I guess, like me to click around other things. There's not a lot in the student data sandbox right now. Otherwise, I'd usually take you through some examples. Um, but here's how you can get in touch with me if you have any questions um, or if you would like to um, maybe set up an assignment for your class to use this. Um, you can also make an appointment with me using this URL as well. All right, and I think Sam is putting that assessment into the chat and we'll email the recording when we have it. Yeah, so and just the last thing before people head out, because I know we're right at 3.30, um, the next one in this series, um, which you can go to that webinar page and then go to the research and application tab is on um, quality journals. I don't know if I just read this wrong, sorry. Um, so be sure to check that out and sign up. Um, so uh, it is on. March 3rd 
at 11.30 a.m. It's on Quality Journals by Anna Kraft, our coordinator of metadata services. And um, it's really about, um, in this session, we'll offer methods and resources to help you identify journals that match your needs. And we'll discuss indicators and metrics that can help provide insight into journal impact and quality. If you're new to academic journal publishing or if you have questions about churning, um, choosing a journal, this can be a great session. And then after that, we have one on Dimensions AI by Megan Carlton, our science liaison librarian, and Leah Leininger, our health sciences librarian. And then in April, we have one on introduction uh, to legal research. So even if you can't come to the live session, be sure to sign up so that I can email you the recording directly. So, um, and Joe, can you do me a favor and also drop the go link to the slides in the chat? Um, I don't think we grabbed those. I didn't get to grab that at the beginning. That will remind me to also email the slides with all these links on them um, when I email the recording as well. And usually the only delay is that the transcript sometimes takes about 24 hours um, on these things. So uh, be on the lookout for the recording. Yep. Thank you. And I know I said I'd be under 30 minutes and it looks like I was not. So I'm sorry. It's <laughs> fine. This, this, they're 30 minute ish. So are there any other um, questions, concerns? Thanks everyone for coming and uh, have a great week. I'm looking at this uh, woodpecker outside my eye. So. Okay, thanks everyone. Have a good week. Bye.